Today, I'm gonna show you how to create this effect where it looks like you're going through a computer screen and actually looking from the inside. And I'm gonna show you how to create it in literally 30 seconds because this effect is so easy and it can also be as simple or complex as you wanna make it. This is also an effect that's probably gonna come up over and over again because our lives are increasingly dominated by screens, our computers, our phones, and soon the goggles that we're all totally gonna wear. And we've actually used this exact effect a bunch of times in multiple commercials including this one that we just filmed. But like I mentioned, there's a more fast, basic way to create this and a more interesting, complex way to create it. And we're gonna cover both of them, starting with the most basic right after you hit the like button. Let's grab our footage and place it onto our timeline and then grab a still frame or screen capture of the thing that you actually wanna have on screen. For me, I'll just use the Premiere Pro interface that I've screen recorded using free OBS software. This is a good example because it's got a lot of different colors, there's things moving around the screen, and overall it's just something that's interesting to look at. So I'll place it down right above the footage layer and all you have to do to make it look like a screen is highlight the screen cap, go up to effect controls, and under blend mode, choose screen. And now it looks like a screen. Yeah, it's that easy. And choosing your screen blend mode is pretty much the same in any video editing software, but it's still not looking good yet. So there's a couple different things we can do to really sell this effect. Try to adjust the opacity to make it feel better based on how light and dark your screen capture and base footage are. And then what's really important is flipping the screen. If you were just viewing your screen, it would look normal. But if we're viewing from the other side, everything would be mirrored. So in a program like Premiere, just find the effect labeled horizontal flip and in Resolve, it's under the Inspector tab just by clicking Flip here. And in Final Cut, it's in this window where you can set the X scale to negative 100. Now we can simply keyframe our footage to either scale up or down and do the same thing to our screen capture, but a bit faster and more intense because it would be closer to the camera. And finally, a little cherry on top is that we can add a Gaussian blur to both of these and then keyframing one to start blurry and become clear. And for the other one, do the opposite, keyframe it starting it clear and then becoming blurry. And with that, we've created this basic effect and it looks pretty cool. But there's so much more that we can add to this effect to really make it pop, including making it look like you're passing through the screen. So now if you wanted to create the more advanced version, let's head over to After Effects and set things up pretty much the same way we did before. Base clip on the bottom, screen capture over top, set it to screen, flip it, and keyframe one to become more blurry and the other to become less blurry. But now for the actual motion, we're gonna add a virtual camera. The reason we wanna add a virtual camera is because when you move something closer to a camera in real life, there's more perceived motion closer to the camera than for something farther away. We call this parallax. And parallax has a non-linear relationship with the distance to the camera, so you can't just keyframe it to start and end at a faster or different rate. You actually need to curve it out to the correct amount to get it to look right. So it's a lot easier to just create a virtual camera and then play it out. If your video footage is locked off and stationary and you wanna make it look like it's moving, just right click and select a new camera. And then all you have to do is set your clips to 3D and keyframe your camera to move forward or backwards in Z space, which you can either do by adding another view option and dragging your camera around, or if you prefer to work with these settings down here, it's the third and final set of numbers under the camera positioning here. But when you do this, you should notice that there's no parallax between your two clips. And that's because you need to separate these two in Z space, making your bottom base clip further away from the camera and your top clip closer towards. This is what it looks like in 3D space. And once you do that, a simple camera motion will produce a natural organic parallax. So once we've set our camera to move consistently, you can scale up or down your base clip to make sure that it's visible at all times during this motion. And you can adjust the size of your screen to be as large as it feels right and also move it around so it shows the thing that you're most interested in showing in frame. And if you already have camera motion in your shot, like we have here in the actual commercial, you can simply use the 3D camera tracker to create a virtual camera based on this movement. And then just position your screen capture manually where you want it to be similar as before so that it appears in frame at the right time that you want it to. Now there is actually an advantage to capturing a dolly move in or out in real life when you shoot, but I'll be showing you why that's important at the very end of the tutorial. So now we come to the fun part. At some point in time, you're gonna see the screen pop into frame, or it might also just be visible the entire time taking up the entire screen, but it doesn't look convincing. So there's two main things that you wanna add. First is to keyframe the opacity to go from zero to 100 over the course of about three to five frames from the first moment the screen 
screen is visible. Then add an effect called Ripple. In my opinion, Ripple looks way better than Turbulent Displace, it's not even close, and it also takes way less computing power, which is another reason why we're wanting to do this in After Effects instead of Premiere Pro, because Premiere Pro doesn't even have the Ripple effect to begin with. Add the Ripple effect to your screen cap layer, and you can pause here to copy my settings exactly, but the main thing you wanna keep in mind is to start with a large radius value, something like 100, and then reduce it down to zero after about 12 to 20 frames, or whatever feels best in your situation. This will help the effect to feel localized to the center of the screen where it feels like you're passing through, and it'll also help it to slowly come back into form like it's a gel returning back to its original shape. Add a simple Lumetri color effect and keyframe the exposure to go down a little bit over time, and you're so close to done now. This effect looks super cool, and you can really start to understand the basic principle. But there's a couple more things that we can add to really make this effect hit home. The first thing you can add is a lens distortion effect by adding CC lens. Key is that I've keyframed the size to increase from about 35 to about 125 as the movement continues. This gives the screen a bowing effect at the edges, which is what it would actually look like if you were shooting with a lower focal length lens. It could also represent the refractions of light as you're passing through glass, basically just infusing some realism into the shot. Then the final piece that I love is to add a CRT screen texture over top of my footage. To make it easier to work with, I'll just quickly pre-compose this screen capture layer here. And because I've actually done some work to this, but I want all that stuff to remain in this bigger composition, I'm gonna choose this option and leave everything that I've done on this top layer. So now when I dive into this pre-comp, it's fresh and untouched, and I can add this CRT screen texture over top. To make it blend with my footage, I'll just set it to a blend mode. For me, the best one that looks good in this case is overlay, but depending on your CRT screen overlay, something like screen might also work as well. And now when we go back to our larger composition, we can see that our screen here actually has some texture to it, helping us to sell the effect even more. And last but not least, we always wanna throw in some sound effects to give some life and realism to the shot. Some mouse clicks, some general empty room ambience, and the sound of maybe a desktop humming in the background. And lo and behold, this is our final shot. Except it's not, because even this isn't the end of what we can do. If I look at this shot from the commercial and then the raw footage that was shot, there's actually a key difference. So let me know in the comments down below if you're able to catch it, but here's what it is. There's actually a vertigo effect added in the final version. This is the advantage you get from pushing or pulling in real life, because now what you can do is just simply take the scale of your footage and set a keyframe at the very beginning. Then move to the very end and scale your subject so that they remain the same size in frame, regardless of the movement of the camera. Camera. So if the camera's moving away from them, you wanna scale them up. If the camera's moving towards them, you wanna scale down. And when you combine this with everything else that I've shown you, you get this really cool screen pass-through effect. I'll make sure to link to all of the assets that I featured in this tutorial. And if you also wanna check out how you can use the new Rotobrush tool in After Effects, that tutorial is right over here. I'll see you over there.